Modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive Part 21, steam test number 2 and experimenting with the injector feed. If you've been watching the series then you will see that both of the injectors feed a separate clack on an adapter underneath the foot plate and there is only one minor problem with this if one of the clack balls doesn't seat then you cannot hit the clack valve with a spanner whereas when the injectors feed directly to the clack valves on the back head if the ball is sticking and the injector is blowing a little bit you can just whack it with a spanner and it generally reseats the ball as you know I originally removed the ball from the clack valve that's on the boiler back head because there's already a stainless steel ball fitted in each clack valve on the adapter for this experiment with the injector feed I've replaced the stainless steel ball on the clack that's on the back head and I'm really curious to see whether the injectors will feed water into the boiler when each injector potentially has to force the water past two ball valves. The gas burner has been lit for a while, there's sufficient water in the boiler and now when I open the regulator let's see what happens. The drain cock lever is pushed forward so the drain cock under the steam chest is open now that's why there's a lot of steam at the front. This is not as good as having a drain cock on the end of each cylinder, but this is the way the engine is, so I'm going to have to live with it. And it appears to work. When I close the drain cock, I'm not getting a shower bath, and it's certainly much better than it was before, and it's working as it should. With only £25 per square inch of steam pressure in the boiler, not only are the wheels going round, but the whistle blows, it doesn't blow very strongly, but at least it blows. There's not really enough pressure at £25 per square inch to make the injector work, but I'll give it a go anyway, just to see what happens. So I turn the water on first, which cools the injector down, and as I open the steam valve, the water from the overflow speeds up, and then all of a sudden, to my surprise, it stops, which means that the injector is feeding the water into the boiler. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't think this would be the case. Although it's not perfect, it's still a little bit dribbly, I can clearly see the water level climbing up the gauge glass. This was the level of water showing in the gauge glass before I used the injector, and the reason that the injector just knocked off with a big cloud of steam is because the water went right to the top, and if you get water coming down the steam line to the injector, the injector will not work at all. As you can see by the performance of the engine currently, and don't forget it's on very low pressure still, which is going to produce fairly wet steam, there's not a lot coming out of the chimney. So I'm pleased about that. It looks like fitting the pipe back onto the regulator tube so that it sticks right up into the top of the dome has done the trick. It's not priming, there's no oil coming out of the chimney, and it's running very clean indeed. So I'm just going to let the engine run and see whether it gets any better or any worse and mainly to see whether the small gas burner is capable of making pressure against the engine running. From what I'm seeing, the engine is running very sweetly. It's not making a load of noise, but that's largely due to the fact that it's no longer sat on my soundboard. I always work on a soundboard to amplify any mechanical noises. Even when I'm really heavy handed with the regulator, the engine still runs very smoothly and quite sweetly, without much clattering at all. I actually ran the engine for quite a lot longer than I showed in the video, so I'm now coming out of play mode and getting back to test the injectors to make sure that they work mode. And the bad news is, the injector will not inject once working pressure is reached. In fact, it won't inject above £60 per square inch. So I tried the one on the other side and that won't either. Both of the injectors work at low pressure, 25 to 30 pounds per square inch, but much above that, nothing. So the next step is to remove the stainless steel ball from the clack valve that's on the back head and put the cap back on and pipe it all back together. That's easier said than done because the engine's very hot at the moment, I've turned the gas off and the pressure's nearly gone, but the temperature's still way up. But this is the only excitement I get in my life these days, so I thought it would do the job while the engine is still hot. And using a bit of intelligence, 
I turned one of the rolling roads upside down and the other one the right way up, and look, the engine is jacked up on the rolling road. I need the engine held up in the air like this because, as I took the nut off the bottom of the clack valve, it slid down the pipe and went under the running board, so it's right underneath, but luckily, with the engine in this position, I can get my hand underneath. I'd like to show you this. This is a Rylang oil can. I'll put the spelling on screen. I have three of these, and the first one I bought over 35 years ago, and it's still as good now as it was then. The best thing about Rylang oil cans is that you only have to buy them once. I buy mine from my friends at Blackgates Engineering. The address for Blackgates is on screen as well. Before oiling all the moving parts of the engine with the new oil can, I lit the burner, so by now we have a bit of pressure. It's going up towards 40 pounds per square inch. Time to test the injector. Water valve on, let the water run, open the steam valve, and the injector injects. It immediately dries up, and it's pumping water into the boiler. Sometimes you get it right the first time. You open the water valve, and then open the steam valve, and it injects. Other times, the water continues to run, and you just have to back off the water a little bit. Then it picks up and makes that lovely sound as the water is being pumped into the boiler. But the pressure's still low, mainly because the gas has run out. So I've changed the gas canister, and you will notice that the gas canister sat in a small pot of water. This water's not hot, it's just aired, but it stops the can from freezing up. What I'm doing at the moment is just checking the safety valve. I set it in the last steam test, but they take a couple of settings before you get them exactly where you want them to be. And this one's about there. This safety valve is blowing off at 90 pounds per square inch, which is the working pressure for this engine. So I think it's time to give it another run. I open the drain cock at the front. I say drain cock because don't forget there's only the one, and it's on the steam chest, not on the cylinders. And then I carefully open the regulator, and the wheels start to go around without spewing loads of water and oil out of the chimney. Quite unlike the problems that I had in the previous steam test. Sometimes safety valves don't reseat properly, and this is not reseating perfectly, but a quick tap with the barco spanner and it behaves itself. Hopefully this should settle down after a while. And if it doesn't behave itself, I will ask Don English and his son David of Jubilee Fittings if they'd be so kind as to make me a safety valve that will knock off within about £10 per square inch of blowing off. In case you wonder what I just did and why there was suddenly steam in the cab, it's because I opened the water gauge blowdown valve just to clear the glass. Now the engine's at full working pressure, I'm having a quick look at how well the crosshead pump pumps water into the boiler. And it's actually pumping water into the boiler remarkably well, considering how much of the water is being pumped out onto the bench in between the two front wheels. All that it really needs is the pump ram packing, but I'm not too worried. A bit of water on the ground is nothing to worry about. And whilst it's doing that, it's lubricating the ram anyway. But it's yet another example of bad assembly of Chinese products. The products are well made and badly put together. I can fix it, but it's going to be difficult. It would have been easy to fix before the boiler was put on the frames. In any case, I'm not a great fan of crosshead pumps or axle pumps because they do take some power off the locomotive and if it's just a single pump like this one, it makes the power delivery uneven. But the good news is the crosshead pump fills the boiler fine against the steam that's been used by the cylinders. So it's successful in that aspect. Hopefully next week I'll be coal firing this locomotive, but I can't do that in the workshop, it will be outside on the picnic table. And in the final episode, I will hopefully be steaming it around a railway somewhere. It can't be my garden railway, because my garden railway is 7 and a quarter inch gauge, and this is a 5 inch gauge engine. So why did I buy a 5 inch gauge engine when I have a 7 and a quarter inch gauge railway around the garden? Well, I'm just a bit stupid. But I like the size of this thing. It's not too big and clumsy and it's not too big and heavy to go on the sideboard. So that's about it for this episode. I'm just going to leave the engine running. You'll see me tweaking the safety valve because I do get a bit obsessive with them. But never mind. It runs quite well. I'm very pleased with it. Both of the injectors work perfectly. What more can a poor man want? And that's it from me for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.